Hello Spark fans and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where this week we're looking at the analyst user. Those guys who just want to run some queries, interrogate the data, but they don't want to get under the Spark hood. They don't want to be looking at clusters and distributions and all the crazy stuff. They just want to write some SQL and see how that works. Now with Ignite last week, we had one big important release for this, which is AD support for Power BI. So rather than having to get these guys to generate a PAT token, that personal access token we use in Databricks, they can just log on using their AD credentials and use it as a regular user, as if it was a normal database, which is really cool. Now, I thought I'd tie this in with another thing, which is table access control. And it's been a bit of a controversial part of Databricks for a long time, because it's a flicking a switch and saying, I want to secure Databricks based on SQL level permissions. I want to say, grant select on this, grant execute on this. It's that kind of SQL style permissions. So we're saying it's not based on AD access to the lake, it's based on security layer in Databricks. Now, some pros and cons for that, and we'll do that as an entirely separate video, but it does mean we can control what the user can see when they're going through Power BI. So let's have a bit of a look at how that works. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe if the video is useful, and let us know in the comments if you've got any questions or any scenarios that you don't think we've covered. Let's have a look. All right, so here we are. I'm logged in currently as my admin user. So I'm logged in as me, going around having a look what's going on. Now, first and foremost, I created a new user. So we go into our admin console, we've got this, my analysts, so just a random guest user in my AD, and I've added them to this data analysts group. Now again, big, big, big thing in Databricks, that's not an AD group. One day, maybe, but for now, that is a Databricks group that I'm manually collecting AD users into. So I've got this group which just has my analyst user in there that I can then start working with. Now over again in my admin console, I've also gone into access control and I've enabled this thing, that controversial table access control. Now that's been in preview for a long, long, long time. Um, and honestly, I wrote it off like a year and a half ago because it's fairly buggy and had too many restrictions. Giving it another go now and seeing how it works. So we'll see. So that's now enabled on my entire workspace but actually it just enables the ability to turn it on at a cluster level. So table access control is enabled, but doesn't actually do anything until I go on a cluster and say, you are access controlled. So you can see we've got this one, this my analyst cluster has that little shield. So that is saying this is a controlled, or it's using table access control on this cluster. So under advanced options, you can see I've got that table access control button. This only appears if I've set that workspace level setting saying this is allowed and then I can tick and turn that on. As it says, only allows Python and SQL commands. So it locks that cluster down and says, you're only allowed to use Python and SQL on this cluster. And then that's fine. Then under my permissions, I've said my analyst is allowed to attach to this particular cluster. So my, my analyst doesn't have any permissions anywhere, doesn't have any access to the lake, doesn't have anything that it's allowed to do, but I have said to it, you're allowed to connect to this cluster. So if I flip over, so I've got another Databricks window open, and this one is logged in using that analyst Active Directory account. Again, no access to anything. They have no admin privileges. So they can see that one, there's one cluster running. They can't see the other clusters that they can't use. They can't create the cluster. It's grayed out. So it's a really locked down user. They can't go and mix anything up. They can't spend money. I, they can't choose to start a cluster just because I've said you're allowed to attach to that cluster. That's the only thing they can see. Uh, if I go into data, it's nothing. Because we're using table access control, and I've said this user isn't, doesn't have any particular privileges. So I need to set up the privileges that this user can inherit so they can work with that data. So let's switch back to my admin user. And so I can just go and just got a quick admin thing. I can do this. So I can say grant select on VentureWorks to that group. Again, very, very similar to SQL style stuff. I'm saying this group of people, data analysts, are allowed to select. They're not allowed to do anything else. They can't modify tables, they can't delete tables, they can't get to the detail underneath those tables, but you can select. So then if we switch back over, I should be able to go into databases, and we can now see that AdventureWorks database, and we can now see all the contents. And that's, I'm doing that at database level. Again, I can do that at any object. So I can do that on a table level. I can say, you're allowed to see that one table, that whole database, various different things I'm allowed to brand uh, under that security. So actually, I've now got that. I should be able to go and create a new thing. So let's create a notebook, do my SQL analysis. 
Gonna be, again, this has to be Python or Scala because I've got that table access control turned on. And then I can come in and I can go in and yeah, select star from VentureWorks. All right, if that works. So submitted the query, it's running the command. Again, I don't have access as this user to that lake. So I'm assuming anything has got in there and it can do it. So because I've granted select to that particular table, then I can then work with that table. Uh, can I do, I thought okay, I can do describe. So I can say, tell me the structure of that. So read out the schema. Okay, so I can't do that. So I can't get into the details behind it. So you can choose how much, how many levels of access you want. So I should be able to do grant, uh, just steal that, read metadata. We do this level. Okay, then come back and say, what's going on on that particular table? And there we go, I can now get the schema. So we can choose to do various levels of things. And certain commands aren't gonna work because they're gonna hit some Scala type things under the hood and I was gonna say, no, you're not allowed to do that on this cluster. But I can go and see some information. I can go and see what's going on. I can see this is a local live and that's why it's working. And yeah, we can do some things straight through table access control. So that, that is kind of useful. It's kind of a nice way of interacting with the cluster itself. Now, the interesting thing, the new thing is Power BI. So being able to say, hey, I want as a AD user to access a particular Spark cluster, and this used to be awful. So it used to be, when I went to get data, I'd get a load of options through, and I'd have to pick Spark, um, which is kind of knocking around somewhere. So I'd have to pick this Spark option, and then it'd want this kind of uh, URL kind of server that I had to kind of just build out this server string from different parts of my cluster information. And it's fine, and it worked. It's just slightly annoying. <laughs> it's like most people, you look at it, you try and start explaining that to a data analyst user, and their eyes start to glaze over, and they're like, uh, no, this, I just want to get data. Give me the server name, and let me log in, and I'm happy. Uh, and I'm glad to say, so the latest version, so it has to be the September 2020 release of Power BI Desktop, can do that. So under Azure, we've got this, bag. we've got Azure Databricks now. So we can hit connect, That'll come up, and I still need some information. We still need to get some things from our cluster. So as that user, as my analyst user, I can go in, I can look at my available clusters. I still annoyingly have to go down to this advanced options, JDBC, ODBC, so I can go click on that little tab. But then at least it's asking me for the two things I can see. So Power BI wants two things, it wants server, name, server host name and HTTP path. And I've got these both as fields there. So server host name, just copy that straight across, pop that in there. And then HTTP path, basically, which is the Databricks workspace you're connecting to, and then what's the name of the cluster? You know, so you can see my cluster ID is baked into there. So it, it kind of makes sense as to what we're trying to do. Do I want to import a direct query? Do that choice. And then the magic bit, I've now got that option. I've now got the, I want to connect using Azure ID, which just makes sense. So I'm going to sign in gonna ask me for my credentials. There we go. You can see, oh, wow, it's rendering fantastically. So we're gonna choose analyst. Uh, I'm gonna do that. I can't remember my temporary password, I think again. So there we go, so that's logging in with my Active Directory credentials, not using that PAT token. So I'm not having to have users go in, go into the admin settings, generate a PAT token, give it a time to live, any of that stuff. I'm just connecting as me into there using my AD. So then you can see the cluster going, it's a Spark connector. You can see that one database. Now remember under my admin user, if I look at databases, I got loads of databases. There's loads of things registered, but the only thing that my analyst user can see is the one thing that I created that select on. So again, that kind of by using table access control, I'm at least kind of controlling how much they see. So I've got a huge workspace that's used across lots and lots of different people. I can say, well, you can see that bit and you can see that bit and I can kind of carve it up a little bit. If we're doing just, just the lake level security, then they'll be able to see tons of tables in here. And it's only when they try and select from a table, they go, no, you don't have access to that. And so it's a bit of a toss up as to how you want to control access. I mean, the lake layer is far easier to manage because we can have Active Directory groups and it means that they can get to that data via a couple of different directions. If they're connecting from Power BI using data flows, if they're connecting in from Databricks directly, wherever they're connecting, if it's the lake, the storage layer, we've got that security, then that gives us the finest level of control. Whereas if we're using the Databricks level of security, it allows us to make this experience nicer. 
that what what can I actually see? And they know that the things they can see, they can definitely query. But yeah, it's a little bit clunky. And the fact that we can't use AD group share is really annoying. Uh, but yeah, so I can then take that. I can say, we'll grab that. Let's grab product. Uh, I want to load that data. Going to bring in, so that's because I chose uh, import mode, it's going to go query that from Databricks. It's querying the cluster live. Going to bring and import that into my uh, local setting. So it's going nothing connecting to it, but that's that's working, right? So I'm connecting to Databricks using Active Directory, which is fantastic for me. So I can go in, I can say, well, okay, there's a relationship here. So I've got my product ID on which side, do, 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 do. Back to the in here, there we go. So I can just create a relationship. There we go. I can then go back into my report, do something super, super basic. Again, I'm not going to build a Power BI report. I'm just going to show you how it works. So I can grab my name. Again, grab my name. There we go. And I can grab some real basic details, just my line total. You know, so there's a relationship there, and that's going off and querying Power BI live, which is great. Well, it's importing the model. As soon as I hit refresh, it'll go back. I can do this in direct query. So if I wanted to leave that analyst cluster just permanently turned up, I can, I can just leave it there. And then whenever someone goes and interacts with their report, it's going to go back, hit that data cluster, and return the results. And again, I can do all the, the modern, fancy model stuff in terms of creating an aggregate layer, in terms of creating a composite data model. So I can have my dimension style things stored inside Power BI. I can have my, um, a, my, a certain granularity on my giant fact style table held in Power BI. And only when someone drills down, then it does a direct query hit and hit my data cluster to protect against concurrency. So I can do proper modern patterns and use Databricks now as this nice, easy to navigate store behind things. So probably a little bit more to work out in terms of getting that final, final step in the Databricks security model of saying, can we please just have Active Directory groups just if I could have an AD group and go, well, this group has access to Databricks and this group gets select on this database, not on that database, that's going to make life so much easier. And then this entire story actually becomes quite slick. So that is the new Power BI AD integration. So really interesting. Basically just makes that story much, much nicer for the analyst community. Now we know there's more stuff coming in terms of the Redash integration and that kind of stuff. So there's going to be more work in terms of how the SQL analyst community gets to work with that stuff, because we saw the data acquisition of Redash back in Spark Summit. So there's lots and lots of stuff I'm sure coming in there to kind of try to actually bolt on and improve that experience. But this alone, this little kind of just let's switch on AD just is a step in the right direction. And when we're talking about that lake house pattern, when we're saying, right, we want Databricks to move from being this kind of fairly hard to use data engineering, big, crunchy, big data tool to actually, this is the data store for engineers, for data scientists, for analysts, and for the business community in dashboards. This is a good step in that direction. This is helping it move it slightly from a niche specialist tool to actually a much more approachable data analyst tool. And everything that we get on that step just helps move us towards that whole lake house. I've got one platform that can do everything. And we're getting there. We are moving, moving closer and closer towards that path. So if you have a chance, try this out, have a look at what it, how it's working. This is still in preview. It's in public preview, so you can go and have, uh, have a go. But I'm sure there might be two, one or two bugs and timeouts. And if you leave it on direct query and you're using it after an hour, is that still going to work? Lots of things to still find out and work with. Now I'm going to be digging into actually when we're looking at lake level security and table access control, what's actually a good model? How does it go wrong? Where's, where's the best way to set that stuff up? So I'll be digging that and that'll be a future video coming up. All right. So leave you to it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.